All right, Frontline, how are you doing? Uh, this is Val. I'm here with part three of the resistance module, um, and I want to talk about strategies for dealing with resistance once someone um, has figured out that the virus in their body is resistant to medications. Um, so number one strategy would be switch regimen to something that you're not resistant to um, or something that's easier for you to take in terms of the schedule of it or food restrictions or the side effects we have a lot of options um, so pros on this or the sort of benefits of this would be a, a fresh start um, and you could you know get on something that you're you know that there's no resistance to um, a risk or a con of this would be that someone, if uh, someone can run through the treatment options pretty quickly, particularly if what they really need is adherence counseling and sort of help sticking with the regimen, um, it can be really easy to sort of blow through all of the options that we have. Um, so adherence counseling would be a strategy that um, if someone is regularly missing doses um, or for whatever reason, um, then there are totally ways that we can help um, to, uh, you know, uh, help get to the bottom of what the problem is. And there are a lot of things that get in the way of adherence. Um, so. Uh, pros of adherence counseling would be that it helps with behaviors or habits that keep someone from being ad adherent. Um, the risks or cons there is that it obviously doesn't address issues of drug absorption um, and if somebody is somebody misses doses occasionally but really their liver is so damaged that it doesn't distribute the meds very well then they can get all the adherence counseling in the world but it doesn't address the physiological thing the physical um, piece of the uh, resistance so more strategies for dealing with resistance um, some might choose to nurture resistant virus, that is to stay on a regimen that HIV is resistant to. Um, and the big pro of this, the benefit, is that resistant virus, um, because it's a mutated form of the virus, is actually weaker than non-resistant virus, what's called wild type virus, um, in a kind of a Maurice Sendak move, wild type virus, and it does less damage. Um, but obviously the con or the risk there is that HIV still does some damage. Um, and, uh, if someone wants to take time off from meds, that's a really understandable, um, position. You know, the, the sort of idea that, well, here it is, here's your regimen, you're going to be on it for the rest of your life, can be really discouraging to some folks. And so... Um, people that I know have decided to take some time off occasionally um, and so uh, the pros or benefits of that is that it gives your body a break from the meds and all the side effects and the pill burden and the reminder of the stupid disease um, and it restores in about half the time it restores wild type virus in the body that is HIV that doesn't have any mutations now remember that HIV that doesn't have mutations is a stronger form of HIV it's more susceptible to medication but if there's no medication in the system it actually can do more damage so the cons here this can be a really dangerous method for somebody with a lower CD4 count or a history of low CD4 counts um, somebody who has higher CD4 counts might have a little more wiggle room where this is concerned. Um, more strategies for dealing with resistance. Therapeutic drug monitoring I mentioned in part two, um, TDM. This is close monitoring of the bloodstream. So um, you, uh, the, well, let's, let me say, the cons are that it's expensive and a pain in the butt and not regularly offered. It requires an overnight stay in a hospital. Often they put a, uh, a port in so that they can draw blood regularly and that can be really not just painful, um, but uh, really, really a pain in the butt. Um, but the pro of it is that they, you know, take your blood every 
every, you know, two hours or every hour or whatever the sort of protocol is. And it can help to identify if there's poor absorption of the bloodstream that's due to drug interactions or problems with the liver. So you can get you, you, someone can get really customized care, like really customized dosing. Um, but there's a lot that you have to go through and it's not the standard of care here and it's expensive and who wants to stay in the hospital overnight, etc. Um, so something that comes up, um, in class when I have, uh, folks in front of me who are asking questions rather than on the other s other end of the uh, series of tubes that is the internet um, is the topic of cross resistance um, and so this is when a single mutation in HIV causes resistance to more than one medication most of what I've talked about so far is one mutation makes one medication not work but this is where a single mutation makes more than one medication not work. So no drug causes cross-resistant to every other drug and no HIV is going to be cross-resistant to all of the viruses. Um, but resistance to a drug in one class might lead to resistance to other drugs in that same class. The non-nucleosides, particularly the non-nukes, um, can all be knocked out with a single mutation. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what that next bullet point said. Um, I want to mention something here that's not on this slide. There was, a couple of years ago, a piece of news about a person in New York City who had um, virus that was resistant to 19 out of 20 meds. Um, and this is sort of akin to what I was talking about, the super virus, people thinking that the virus had superpowers um, or was super resistant to everything and was going to basically like eat Cincinnati or something. Um, but what the what they actually found was not that his virus was resistant to all of it, but that he had populations of all different kinds of resistant virus in his body. So it wasn't that each particular virion had resistance to 19 out of 20 meds. It was that some of the virus in his body was resistant to one, and some of the virus in his body was resistant to another, and a third group was resistant to a third type of medication. So it's a different, um, there's a distinction there between, there, there aren't viruses that, there aren't HIV virions that are resistant to all of the meds, but someone's body can contain populations of multiple like groups of resistant virus. So um, how can you tell if you're resistant? Well, the number one step is to watch the viral load. Um, and we want to use the rule of three. If you don't remember what the rule of three is, go back and watch the viral load piece of CD4 and viral load, um, because this is crucial. The rule of three says that a change in viral load is only statistically significant when it's three times bigger or smaller. So, um, if, so if someone's viral load is going up and they're on meds, it doesn't tell us which med HIV is resistant to. Um, and for that we have resistance testing, um, genotype and phenotype resistance testing. So genotyping, you can tell from the word geno, it looks at the genetic makeup of the HIV in someone's body to see what mutations have occurred. Um, so it, it compares genetic mutations from someone's HIV to known mutations that allow resistance. Um, so with that, you have to have a detectable viral load. Um, phenotyping is the other type of resistance test. And then, and it's related to the word phenomenon as in a thing that happens in a place, which is they put your blood in a test tube and mix it with each of the antiviral drugs to see which one HIV is sensitive to. So if the virus when poured into the test tube that contains AZT makes a lot of copies of itself, then the AZT isn't working um, and the HIV is resistant to that. And for this, viral load has to be above 500 so that there's enough to do the testing with. So bottom line, resistance happens. It's not the end of the world. It happens a lot, actually, um, and it's more likely to happen if someone misses doses consistently, but that's not the only reason that it happens. The goal of adherence is to keep HIV from reproducing 
protein so it can't make resistant virus and use this to inform your antiviral treatment decisions or those that you're supporting someone else in making. All right, uh, thanks for your attention. More later.